How many times have you wondered if the envy of the people around you could somehow prevent your serenity? Have you ever had the feeling of being stuck and powerless because of someone who continues to be negative towards you? Thanks to the Zen story that you are about to hear in this video, a story of Buddhist wisdom, we will discover together what the signs to notice are if someone envies us. Remember that knowing how to recognize people who feel envious of you is very important to live more peacefully. For this reason, it is essential to know the ways in which to identify these people and eradicate their envy as one does with weeds in the garden. So stay until the end of this video to find out how to protect yourself from these vampires who feed on your inner energy and your success. But before continuing, subscribe to the channel and activate notifications so you will be informed when we publish new content for your spiritual growth and inner peace. In an ancient Buddhist temple, nestled among the majestic mountains of Japan, lives the wise monk Satoru. As the sunset light filtered through the temple windows, creating an atmosphere of quiet and deep reflection, the disciples sat around him for a very important lesson. Today, I will talk to you about a topic that often torments us, envy. Satoru began in a calm voice. His penetrating eyes scanned the faces of his disciples, and they, as always, anxiously awaited their mentor's pearls of wisdom. Like a poisonous snake, envy creeps among us, corroding our inner peace and hindering our spiritual path, added the monk. A shiver of uneasiness ran through the group. Envy was a feeling that everyone knew, a sneaky demon that could lurk even in the purest hearts. And to illustrate the gravity of this feeling, Satoru told his disciples a legend that many years before had shocked the quiet village in which the monastery stood. Once upon a time, on the slopes of the snowy mountain, there lived a young shepherd named Kenshin, known for his kindness and pure heart, Satoru began. Kenshin was loved by everyone in the village, both for his skill in herding sheep and for his contagious cheerfulness. And also because, thanks to his skills, he gave work to many people and was very committed to helping others and making the village grow. However, among the villagers, there was also a man named Masaharu, consumed by envy towards Kenshin. This individual could not stand the happiness and success of the young shepherd and harbored a deep and poisonous resentment within himself. He would have liked to be the center of attention, and he would have wanted people to value and respect him like they did Kenshin. But the people, especially the girls of the village, were only attracted to Kenshin. They felt a sense of antipathy and distrust towards him. So one day, while Kenshin was grazing his flock on the banks of a crystalline lake, Masaharu had the idea of implementing an evil plan. With an evil smile, he pushed the shepherd into the icy waters of the lake, condemning him to certain death. Kenshin's body was never found, and the lake from that day on was nicknamed Black Lake in memory of the tragedy. It was said that Kenshin's spirit still wandered among its dark waters, mourning his broken life and the envy that led to his death. The disciples listened to the legend with bated breath and their hearts were touched by Kenshin's sad story. Satoru's words resonated in their minds, inviting them to reflect on the dangers of envy and the power of compassion. Envy isn't just a negative emotion that torments those who feel it, Satoru explained gravely. It is also a destructive energy that robs us of our inner strength and hinders our spiritual progress. Envy consumes us like a fire that burns within us, making us focus on the successes of others instead of cultivating our talents and realizing our dreams. It takes away our joy and serenity, preventing us from fully living the present and looking to the future with confidence. Envy is like a poison that poisons our soul, Satoru stated with conviction. It drives us away from the light of awareness and pushes us towards the darkness of ignorance. After having clarified the gravity of envy and after observing the contrite faces of his disciples, 
Satoru went on to explain how to recognize it and how to protect oneself from its negative effects. Envy manifests itself in different ways, the master continued. It may be a sarcastic comment about your success, a scowl at your happiness, or an attempt to belittle your accomplishments. The disciples paid close attention to their mentor's words. Their goal was to understand how to recognize this feeling and how to prevent it from damaging their existence. While the disciples were grateful for the wisdom that transpired from the monk's words, Satoru began to illustrate the seven secrets through which to identify those who feel envy of us. The first thing you need to do, said the monk, is to pay attention to how the person in front of you reacts to your good news. A fleeting hint of disgust, a forced smile that doesn't involve the eyes, or a grimace of disappointment hidden behind a hand can betray their envy. So, my dears, study and learn the facial micro-expressions and body behavior of the people in front of you. It will be crucial to understand if they feel envy. Gossip is another sign you need to pay close attention to, Satoru continued. Envious people, in fact, love to spread rumors and falsehoods about you. They do it because, through gossip, they poison the air you breathe every day. So if someone tells you gossip behind your back or tries to overshadow your successes with made up stories, they are likely motivated by envy. Excessive flattery is another sign not to be underestimated. Those who praise you excessively without ever highlighting your defects or offering you constructive advice often hide deep envy. Be wary of this excessive praise because it hides the real desire to see you fail or suffer. While the disciples took notes, Satoru paused to ensure that each of them could assimilate these concepts well. Then he continued, An envious person could suddenly become your best friend, showing an excessive, almost morbid, interest in your life, said the monk, introducing another sign to watch out for. Therefore, be wary of these sudden friendships, they are often aimed at gathering information about your weaknesses and then using them to sabotage you. The disciples, faced with these words, reflected on the many circumstances in which they had lived similar experiences. Now, they thought, they knew how to recognize false friendships. Those who constantly criticize you without ever offering solutions or constructive advice are probably motivated by envy. Satoru continued. Envy pushes them to belittle your successes and make you feel inferior, fueling your doubts and insecurities. Satoru continued his lecture by talking about another sign to watch out for. Envious people, he said, tend to constantly compare themselves to you. They do this with the aim of highlighting their supposed successes and downplaying yours. This behavior is a clear sign of insecurity and envy. Be wary of those who try to belittle your achievements because they are only victims of their internal demons and the failures they collect every day. Another thing you need to pay close attention to is linked to the obstacles that envious people try to place between you and your goals. A jealous person may try to hinder your progress in a subtle way, creating obstacles or spreading misinformation behind your back. Be careful of those who seek to boycott your efforts or sow discord between you and your loved ones. These are the real enemies, hidden in the shadows, ready to strike when you least expect it. The disciples absorbed the master's words, their hearts filled with wisdom and awareness. But there was one doubt that still tormented them. Master Satoru, a disciple asked in a timid voice, is there a way to protect yourself from other people's envy and its negative effects? Satoru smiled kindly. Of course, my dear disciple, there are two powerful weapons against envy. The first weapon is knowledge. The more we know the secrets of envy, the more easily we can recognize it and defend ourselves from its subtle attacks. Only through knowledge can we unmask the faces of envy and protect ourselves from its poisons. Therefore, always carry with you the seven signs we just talked about. The second weapon is compassion. 
Instead of feeling hatred or anger towards those who envy us, we must feel compassion for them. We must understand that envy is a sign of internal suffering, insecurity, and lack of self-esteem. Those who envy are trapped in a cage of pain, incapable of enjoying the successes of others and incapable of achieving their own successes. Compassion allows us to see beyond envy and recognize the humanity that hides behind it. Instead of judging and condemning, we can offer compassion and understanding, helping those who suffer to free themselves from the chains of envy and find inner peace. In addition to knowledge and compassion, Satoru taught his disciples another powerful weapon against envy, meditation. Through meditation practice, disciples learn to cultivate self-awareness, recognize their negative thoughts, and transform them into positive, compassionate thoughts. Meditation also helped them develop a calmer and more serene mind, less inclined to be troubled by the envy of others. Thanks to meditation, the disciples learned to live in the present, to enjoy their achievements and not be influenced by the judgments and opinions of others. Thanks to this precious lesson, the story of Kenshin and the legend of the Black Lake remained imprinted in the hearts of the disciples, a constant warning not to be overwhelmed by envy and to instead cultivate compassion. In the following days, the disciples put Satoru's teachings into practice, carefully observing the behavior of the people around them and trying to discern between sincere friendship and hidden envy. They learned to recognize micro-signals that betrayed envy, such as a scowl at their successes, a sarcastic comment about an accomplishment, or an attempt to belittle their accomplishments. And over time, they developed an acute sensitivity towards envy, managing to identify it even in its most subtle forms. But they didn't just recognize it, they also learned to manage it with compassion and wisdom. When they perceived envy in others, they did not judge or condemn. Instead, they tried to understand the profound reasons for that envy, recognizing the suffering and insecurity that were hidden behind it. With kindness and understanding, they offered words of comfort and wise advice, helping those trapped in envy to free themselves from their chains and find inner peace. Their compassion was an act of kindness, a strategy towards them to eradicate envy from their lives. They realized that envy behaved like a contagious virus. If it was not countered with compassion, it could spread rapidly, poisoning souls and undermining relationships. But what lessons can we draw from this story and the legend of the Black Lake? In this video, we learned that envy is a feeling that can poison our relationships and hinder our spiritual process, preventing us from living peacefully. And we have learned that if we want to safeguard our inner well-being and our emotional balance, it is essential to identify it and remove it from our existence.